one, two, two and then the three, three, three and then the four, four, two, you gotta breathe, breathe, one and then the two, two, two and then the three, three, three and then the four, four, two, you gotta breathe, breathe, two, you gotta, uh, 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 Hey, give it up for Anu Kara, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Anu. And give it up for that for that uh, new shirt he just bought. <laughs> Still has the fucking creases in it. You see that shit? <laughs> like he took it out of the box. It was like doing, doing. Yo, you like my new shirt? I didn't notice. You know. So what's happening, New York? You guys all right? All right. A lot of confusion happening in the back there. I can hear it. All right, you guys are late. Can we get you anything, like a fucking watch or something? I don't know. I... All right, back in New York, man. I love it out here. I was in Boston last night. I know it's fucked up. I, I have a jacket. I have a blue jacket. I don't know any. Let me tell you, I don't know anything about baseball, right? But I know that I was wearing blue shoes and blue jeans, so I'll put on a blue jacket. I had a Yankees jacket, and I'm walking around Boston. And. Uh, and apparently they really take this baseball shit real serious over there. Because I'm walking to the mall and I don't know why people are pointing at me. And one man's walking with his son and goes, Why don't you walk with that fucking guy over there? Why don't you walk with... <laughs> I like coming to New York. New Yorkers are always mad. You guys are mad for no reason. <laughs> always pissed off. It's, it's the holiday season. Just mad. Everyone's just walking around angry all the time. I'm not from here. I asked a dude today. I was like, excuse me, do you have to get to the uh, subway? He's like, do I look like a fucking tour guide? <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, officer, but I thought maybe... <laughs> All kinds of Indian people in here. That's good, man. Yeah. I see you got some white dudes, too. Hey. <laughs> Very happy white dudes, too. I tell you that. Somewhere in Queens, there's a dollar store closed early tonight. This is not good. <laughs> I knew there'd be a lot of Indian people in here tonight. I've seen all the empty cabs in the front of the club. <laughs> it's nice, man. I love coming out here. I was in Texas a few weeks ago. Texas. You from Texas? All right, we're not there now, motherfucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> that shit freaks me out in Texas, man, because there's white dudes dressed like cowboys out there. Like, not like, you know, put on a couple of cowboy shits. They the whole cowboy and they're not gay they just dress like that you know what I mean they just I seen a dude he had like them fucking tight wrangler jeans and nut huggers you know what I mean and cowboy boots and the big buckle and <laughs> bigger than this <laughs> bigger than WWF this guy with that thing and I don't know how you could be cool wearing clothes from the 1800s he's walking around like it's 2004 how the fuck are you walking around in clothes from the 1800s like this shit is cool, you know? You don't see me flying around on a magic carpet anymore, you know? I'm not walking around in curly-toed slippers. No, I'm chilling. I'm here right now. Oh, man. So I met you guys already before. It's a big birthday group right here in the front. That's uh, it's, uh, it's uh, one of their birthdays. That's right. He's right there. Yeah, he's 18. I, uh, hers too, that's right. They're from, uh, o, o, what's it called? O, Owigsburg or something shit? Uh, they're, from, they're from a town called Owigsburg. <laughs> and they're like bragging about it too. We're from, <laughs> we're from Owigsburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, f fuck, I'm sorry. I, uh... <laughs> and right after they said it, I think I swear God, and when they said it, I think I heard in the background, <laughs> right in the back, after they said it. we're from Owigsburg. <laughs> Owigsburg. And you guys came from India and moved to fucking Owigsburg. <laughs> like, how did you do it? We are leaving India. <laughs> let's go. Let's play it. Spin the map. Come on. <laughs> oh, shit.
<sighs> All kinds of different Indians in here tonight, man. That's cool. See, for the white folks, they just think Indians are just Indians. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you say something in Indian. <laughs> Ever have somebody say something? Hey, teach me something in Indian. I'm like, which language? <laughs> you know, Indian. <laughs> That's when you just start going. Burp, 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 burp. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's really good, man. We're going to do butt, 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 butt. <laughs> so many languages we have, man. Four or five hundred languages. We have tons of them over there. Some of the languages freak me out in India, man. India, see, India is like one of those countries where from the north to the south, it's like a color chart. You know what I mean? <laughs> when you're up in the north, the people are a lot lighter. And as you move through the country, <laughs> you know, people get darker and darker. You reach the south, and there's some black motherfuckers down there. You know I mean? like, the south Indians can get where they take that black shit too seriously, man. Like, not like black, like black, blacker than black people black. You know what I mean? Like to the point where black people walk past and go, "God damn, you black as shit, man." You know I mean? like, I see one Tamil dude, man. The guy was so black, his shadow was confused. You know. What I mean? Do I follow you or do you follow me? What the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> and you got all those languages from the north to the south, everything's so different, you know what I mean? Anybody here that can speak Tamil, I'm impressed, man. Woo! Woo! That's a, that's just such a, it's a, to me, that sounds like the hardest Indian language to learn, because it's, it's so fast, you know? It sounds like, when they're speaking, it probably sounds like one continuous word, you know what I mean? It, there's no breaks in the sentence. Just, they sound like auctioneers when they're talking, you know? <laughs> Sold. <laughs> sound like pinball machines, you know? <laughs> oh, look, a free game. <laughs> to me, Gujarati has to be the indiest. He's indiest. <laughs> has to be like the easiest Indian. Like, Shut up, we're not... You know? All right, you hold it down, motherfuckers. <laughs> so retarded. <laughs> this fucking Buddha language. <laughs> Such a loser. <laughs> oh, 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 I can't speak that. Oh. <laughs> what kind of dumb shit was that? <laughs> Uh, Gujarati people, man. Your language, you know, and you're the cheapest motherfuckers in India, too. You know that, right? Like, I mean, we're cheap enough on the whole. You know what I mean? Then Gujarati people take it that extra mile. You know what I mean? I seen one dude trying to bargain his way into the show tonight. He rolled up with a goat. I will give you this goat. If you let me. It's a good goat. Milk. Cheese, eggs, everything. There's no fucking eggs in a goat. This one has eggs. This goat will be your lifeline. Trust to me. <laughs> such an easy language to learn, man. White dudes, you can learn how to speak Gujarati. It's such an easy. All you have to do is learn. All you have to do is add cho or che to the end of any sentence, <laughs> and you're speaking it. Kem cho su che su kabe che su che. They love that ch 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 sound. Even when they swear, ch do ch 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 There's obviously some Punjabi people here tonight. Next to you. All right, relax, relax. Not the friend anymore. You can relax now. All right, here. Owigsburg is the pin. Uh, it must be the forgotten pin, I guess. <laughs> oh, Wigsburg. I'm from, from Canada. There's lots of Punjabis in Canada. <laughs> are you from Canada or are you just Punjabi? <laughs> lots of Punjabi people in Canada. You know the funny thing about the Punjabi people in Canada? They move straight from Punjab to Canada, but they'll all move into the same neighborhood. They're all, like, and they'll all live in the same neighborhood, and they don't have to learn English then because everybody in their neighborhood speaks Punjabi. <laughs> so they don't ever learn English. But so they think they're being smart, so they have kids, and they send the kids out to school in the hopes that the kids will learn English, come home and teach it to them. <laughs> then the kids go out, learn English, come home, realize the parents can't speak English, and they just swear at the parents all day, right? 
Now what you got in Canada is a lot of Punjabi people walking around thinking they know English, but all they really know how to do is say fuck. <laughs> in as many different ways as possible, right? And they'll try and have a conversation with you in like broken Punjabi and whatever English they know and as much fuck thrown in as possible. And they'll always come up to me like, Oh, Russell, you know the fucking guy has the two fucking, uh, what's the fucking guy with the, you know, the, you know, hockey can the pants, the fucking, what's the name of the fucking, uh, you know, the, Oh, pants, the fucking, what's the name of the guy? You know the guy has the two fucking with the fucking guy and the, what's the fucking, you know the fucking guy. The fuck has the two fucking, uh, fucking, uh, Fucking ah. Uh. I'm looking at like all the non-Indian people doing this. What the fuck is he doing? Big black dude on the end there, man. How you doing, bro? He's acting like he's not him. <laughs> Ain't talking to me, motherfucker. I like the Latino people in New York, man. You got, all the, you got all the cool Latino people here. You got like Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. They're all those fucking macho ones. You know what I mean? Like, Yo, what's up? <laughs> you, go to, you go to LA, you got the Mexicans. The Mexicans are little macho guys too. Hey, what are they? Este? ¿Qué pasa? What's up? They're all fucking little tough guys, you know? We got the South American guys in Canada. They're all those fucking Latin lover types. You know what I mean? Always trying to be slick and cool. This shit is irritating because they don't know when to turn it off. I'm at the Spanish club in Toronto. This girl goes, Oh, Russell, I want you to meet Fernando. Hola, I am Fernando. <laughs> you put your cock away, Fernando. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and don't fuck up a Spanish word around Spanish people because they get very upset by that shit, you know? They'll correct you in a second, too, you know? I was like, I'm going to go have a burrito. It's a burrito. <laughs> Fucking sorito, you know. I, <laughs> you're a big son of a bitch, aren't you, Jesus? Huh? How tall are you, man? Yeah, six three. Oh, you look taller sitting down. I mean, you're tall. Six three is pretty tall. That's all. <laughs> Hope you weren't expecting anything brilliant out of that. <laughs> How old are you, man? Yeah. 40, you look good for 40, man. You look like shit for 20, but... You look good for 40, you're looking good for 40. What's your name? Sorry? Pratab. That's one of those Indian names, Pratab. That's a good Indian name, you know? I'm just going to clear something up right from now, all right? Right from the start, my name is Russell Peters. That is my name. That is my real name. That is my birth name. That's not my fucking stage name. I didn't change shit to impress you. That's my name. Don't come up to me after the show. Hey, Russell, come on. Come on, man. Russell Peters. What's your real name? That's my real fucking name. Both my parents are from India. They named me Russell Peters. You got a problem with it? Talk to my parents, Eric and Maureen. <laughs> and my brother, Julio. That's my name. If I had an Indian name, I'd keep an Indian name. I don't have one. I'd be proud of it. Like a name, Prata. <laughs> Sounds like an Indian guy describing a sound. Then I heard this loud bang, Pratab! <laughs> it's a good solid name though, man, you know? If I had an Indian name, I'd wear it proudly, man, but I don't. I think sometimes Indian people get carried away with Indian names, you know? I mean, we don't realize what some of the names mean in English. I'm not even lying to you. I met this Indian dude. I swear to God, the guy's name was Suck Deep. <laughs> the guy's real name was Suck Deep. Can you imagine living your life with a name like Suck Deep? Somebody's looking for you one day. Yo, man, you suck deep. <laughs> and sometimes, if I have to, I I don't like it. 
Oh, <laughs> fucking wicked name, man. I hate when an Indian guy has an Indian name and then tries to change it to like a white sounding name. You know, to try and fit in better, you know what I mean? But they pick a name that's not even close to their Indian name. Like, hello, I'm Rajinder. You can call me Steve. You're never going to see a white guy doing that, you know what I mean? Hi, I'm Richard. You can call me Suck Deep. I'll tell you something, one of the ugliest Indian girls I ever met. <laughs> She's not here, motherfucker. <laughs> you guys are mean too. I've seen some of the girls looking at their friends. <laughs> one of the ugliest Indian girls I ever met, her name was Pretty. I'm like, fuck, no. <laughs> Not unless your last name is Nasty. <laughs> Got some funny shit, man. 18, right? What's your name again, man? Sorry? Grish? Grish? British. Doesn't that sound like the next line out of his mouth should be motherfucker, you know what I mean? What's your name? Gurdish. Motherfucker. <laughs> 18, man. I wish I was 18 again. Still get boners for no reason, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, what's the weather like? What's the weather like? Boing. Shit! younger you get a boner and you'd bend it to try and get rid of it <laughs> but then you bent it and it felt kind of good you're like since oh. <laughs> 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 they should they wouldn't let me do it on TV Happy birthday there, goodish. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, I like New York. I'll tell you why I like New York, too. Because New York is the one state during the election that reflected the rest of the world. When Bush won, the all of New York went, oh, for fuck's sakes. That's what the rest of the world did. I'm from Canada, you know what I mean? In Canada, we were just like, oh, please. Please. Oh, shit. Now we don't care because the U.S. dollar is sinking and the Canadian dollar is getting stronger. We're like, well, keep that dumbass in power right now. Are they tipping you, Courtney? Okay, good. I'm trying to, I'm trying to date Courtney so he can tip her really well. That'd be cool. <laughs> She's pulling waters out of her ass. I don't know where the hell they're coming from. Oh, look, there's like two on the train. I just hear, boom, <laughs> rabbit, no. Um. <laughs> yeah, man, when Bush won the election, I was a little upset. I want to carry, I'm not that political. This is the only political shit that I have to say. Don't get all freaked out. But I want to carry to win. Until I heard Kerry say this shit, he said it twice during the election, once during one of his speeches and once during one of the debates. I still wanted to win, but this, when he said this, it pissed me off. John Kerry goes, if I'm elected to the presidency of the United States of America, I'm going to see to it that we stop outsourcing our jobs. We are losing good American jobs to other countries, like India. I was like, apparently my people don't know about this yet. He's on TV trying to make it look like every job in the U.S. is going to India. And what he's talking about were the computer jobs. A lot of the computer industry is moving to India, but it makes sense. We're just better at it. You know? 
And it's way, it's way cheaper to pay us, you know what I mean? Here's a sandwich. Oh, thank you. you know I mean? <laughs> Just made sense, you know? But he's on TV trying to make it look like every American job is going to India. And that's ridiculous, because there are certain jobs Indian people should never, ever do. You don't want to, you don't want to call a 1-900 number. <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> what do you want me to be wearing? <laughs> I like leather. Sorry sir, no leather products here. <laughs> that comes from a sacred animal. I want you to beat me. I want you to spank me. I want it to hurt. Oh, no problem, sir. <laughs> Somebody gonna get a hurt real bad. <laughs> you downloading bastards. <laughs> Well, there goes 45 minutes of material you won't be hearing. <laughs> Big Asian dude, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. <laughs> What's happening? That's a, that's a Big Asian. Are you Asian? Yeah. Where are you, where are you from? Earth. I know, but Earth is a great place. But uh, <laughs> we're fucking it up pretty quick right now. So. What part of Asia is your family from? A Chinese Korean or Chinese and Korean? Oh, okay. That's hella Asian, I'll tell you that, man. <laughs> I need an Indian grandfather and you're good to go, man. <laughs> Got the whole continent covered. You know? Chinese and Korean, that's a good mix. What's your name? Jackson Young? <laughs> you could be a black guy for all I know, man. <laughs> Fucking Jackson Young, motherfucker, what? So I'm thinking Young is the Chinese influence, or is that the, yeah? Do you, do you have a Chinese name as well? Uh, no? <laughs> Just Jackson? <laughs> it's not Tap Some Bong, motherfucker. <laughs> They're not all named that. Again, you have to see the video. I like Chinese names, that's why I think they're funky as hell. <laughs> they always meet guys, you know, and they, they always, they do the same. Are you Chinese, bro? What's your name? Eric. Eric? Yeah. Jackson? Eric. Eric? Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, asshole. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you don't make a joke about me. <laughs> you Chinese, Eric? Chi Chi Chiwan? <laughs> So yeah, made in China and made in Taiwan. That's <laughs> it's like he's a Mattel toy, you know what I mean? <laughs> what, do you have a Chinese name there, Eric? Zandi Kai? Zandi Kai. Sounds tougher than Eric, though, doesn't it? You know? Who you can be afraid of if he has a girl? Like, My boyfriend Eric's gonna meet you. I'm like, well, bring that faggot on, you know what I mean? <laughs> My boyfriend Zandi Kai. Oh, oh shit, sorry, man. <laughs> I think the Chinese names sound tougher, you know what I mean? If you're playing a video game and you come down to character selection, who the fuck are you gonna pick? Eric? You know? <laughs> Sandy Kai! <laughs> you never saw like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and like, oh, no, here comes Eric! You know? <laughs> Eric's an asshole! I think that, to me that's like the only Chinese word, like the word, I heard a Chinese guy swear once, I was in line at a club in Toronto it was years ago, and everybody started pushing, and there was a Chinese guy in front of me, and he looks back and he goes, hey, don't push me, asshole. <laughs> that's always stuck with me, you know, hey, don't push me, asshole. You think you're so tough. <laughs> Come 
Because you study the martial arts. <laughs> what did I study? Oh. Study the martial arts. <laughs> I just like it when you say it. <laughs> it's hope. <laughs> Jackson Young. That's a fucking slick name. I like that, man. <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> well, nice to meet you there, Eric. Jackson. <laughs> no, I'm good, thanks. I got my water in. What are you getting? A Heineken? Can you handle it? Indian guys are there. I love to drink. I fucking smell the cab. Ah, ah. Drunk Indian guys are the best because they, they're no, so not fucking slick. Yeah. But here's the thing, when I get drunk, I'm like a happy fucking smooth bastard. I'm like, hey, what's up, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? I'm watching all the other Indian guys, hey, fuck you, man. I'm like, listen, Tattoo, you want to fucking chill out for a minute there, buddy? I like writing my material based on like what's really going on in my life, you know what I mean? Like what, what really happens and just shit that happens to me. And sometimes people get freaked out by it, you know what I mean? And I was like, hey, what the fuck, you shouldn't talk about that. Like, I wouldn't talk about it, but it happened. You know what I mean? It, like, I went to a party in uh, September. It was a film festival in Toronto. So I went to the, uh, one of the parties. Jamie Foxx had a party, right? So I went to his party. And I leave the party. It's like 4 o'clock in the morning now. And there's all these autograph people outside, right? And these aren't, like, just, like, people that, that heard you were going to be there and showed up because they just want to meet that person and get their autograph. These are, like, fucking autograph nerds that just roll around with a book and a pen and hope they see somebody famous one day. And they're like, they're like uh, hey, can I get your autograph? <laughs> and they're not retarded, but that's how they seem, you know what I mean, right? So, so I walk out of this party, and all these autograph people are there, and I'm like, uh, they don't want me, they want like the real famous people inside the party. So I'm walking out feeling pretty good. And then um, as I walk out, I, right in front of me is a midget. Now, it's already funny enough when you see a midget, right? Because <laughs> no matter how politically correct you think you are in your head, the minute you see a midget, you go, holy fuck, a midget. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> I see the midget, I'm like, holy fuck, a midget. And then I'm trying not to stare at him, but you want to look at a midget, because you're like, just trying to make sure everything's in the same, you know, spots, and you know, like, because you don't see midgets all the time. I don't fucking, oh, oh, you made me a midget. It's not like I fucking skinned him and took him home. I just think a little midget stand there, right? And the midget stand there with his autograph book and this giant pen in his hand, you know what I mean? I mean, it was probably like a regular size pen, but in his hand, right? It should look like he was like, I want to get an autograph tonight. Yeah, yeah. So I walk out of the party, I see the midget, and now I'm not sure if he's, uh, like if I, because I, I see him, you see a midget, you don't, you don't go, mm, midget. You, the first thing in your head is, holy fuck, a midget, right? So I'm not sure if I reacted like that or not, because the midget made eye contact with me, and I was like, shit, did I laugh at him when I saw him or something? And I swear to God, this is what the midget says to me. The midget goes, you can't make sure that goes up, right? The midget goes, Russell Peters, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> I was like, I was like, well, all right, buddy. <laughs> Low five. <laughs> and I shook his little midget hand. It was cool, man. You got to shake hands with a midget. You ever shaken hands with a midget, man? And oh, you ever shaken hands? With, you ever put your huge Indian hands on a midget? It's the fucking dopest shit in the world, man. Because you know what happened was, it's kind of like their skin thought they were going to be taller, and then their bones went, ah, fuck it. So when you shake their hands, their hands have all this excess skin on it, right? Like, don't fucking awe. It's, it's not a real human emotion what you're doing. So I'm shaking his little mushy hand, right? And it feels great. It does. I, I don't want to let go at this point. Right? I'm shaking his hand like this feels like a tit. So I'm like, I'm like, and I'm squishing away, and he's talking. I'm like squishy, squashy, squishy, squashy. And I'm like, you getting cold, buddy? Your, nip your knuckles are getting hard. <laughs> that was the coolest thing. I gotta tell you now, I hate that fucking awe sound. <laughs> it's not a real emotion, you know that, right? That's made up. It's like you do go out of your way to make that noise. 
Human emotions don't include all. <laughs> and listen to a baby. A baby will give you true emotions. Laughter or crying. That's what a baby will do. Baby, <laughs> you never hear a baby go, <laughs> Such a dumb sound. I'm going to tell you guys another true story. You're not going to like this. But I'm going to tell it to you anyway. That's right. And I, when I tell you what happens in the story, I do not want to hear you go, oh, ooh. Because you can't do that in regular life. You can't do that at work. Hey, you're late. Ooh. You're fired. Oh. So pretend you're at work for a minute, all right? Now, this is a true story. I'm not, I'm not making this story up. I'm not embellishing on this story to impress you. This is what really happened. And if you have a problem with it, you have a problem with reality. And that's not my fault. <laughs> this is what happened, right? I went to this store to return a shirt. And when I got to the store, the cashier was busy, so I put the bag on the counter. I'm standing there waiting, and then I notice there's another girl behind the counter, right? And her back is facing me, and from behind, she looks really good, right? I say from behind, because sometimes a girl only looks good from behind. And then they turn around, like, <laughs> So... When you meet those girls, they should have a t-shirt on in the back that says, it's, hold on, it's not what you think, you know what I mean? It's just something to warn you. So, from behind, this girl looks really good, right? Then she turns around, and I'm like, holy shit, she was hot, right? Not like, wow, she's very attractive. She was like, fuck me, she's hot, right? And that's what guys do. Guys, you put two men together that are straight. I mean, don't put them together, but I mean, you're like... To put two straight guys together, doesn't matter who they are, they could be your dad, your uncle, your grandfather, two men together and a chick walks by, doesn't matter what she looks like, every guy will go, I'd fuck her, would you fuck her? I'd fuck her, would you fuck her? Why would you fuck her? I'd fuck her. You don't have to kiss her, you just have to fuck her, that's it. Gonna... That's what guys do, we look, like we think the girl's gonna go, would you really? You know, and then, you know. Well, that never happens either, right? So. So she turns around, right? She's really hot. Now here's the thing, guys, you need to learn your level of woman. Figure out what the best looking chick you can get is and stay there. Don't start getting all clever and trying to reach outside the box and, and trying to get better shit than you already have. It, it's fucking the balance up for everybody else, all right? Because what's happening... Because what's happening right now is a lot of very attractive women are developing a breathing disorder. And there's no telethon for it, there's no name for it yet. It's, it's a very serious problem. And I've seen it happen firsthand. A lot of attractive girls just can't breathe properly anymore. I walked up to a really attractive girl at a club, maybe she was hotter than I, and than I should have talked to, I don't know. But I tapped her on the shoulder, I was like, hi. And she goes, <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck happened to you just now? You know what I mean? Did, did you just implode or something? What is it? You want my inhaler? What's wrong with you? You know what I mean? <laughs> and I understand why the attractive women have this attitude nowadays because dorky guys have been trying to pick them up all night, right? And they should learn, <clears throat> you know, stay within your reach. But a lot, of, a lot of pretty girls have this problem. And, and it's cool, I understand that. But it's fucked up when they're an ugly friend. Because every hot chick has an ugly bitch that hangs out with her for no reason. I don't know why she's there. I don't know why you do it. You, you bring her out and you, you, you have like all these hot chicks and then one fucked up looking friend on the end. And, and all you do all night is gas her head up, making her think she's pretty too. You always say, oh, you're so pretty. I like your hair. So pretty. You know, now, now this ugly chick thinks she's as hot as you are. And you walk up to the ugly chick to try and get to the hot one. You're like, excuse me. And the ugly girl goes, Pff. And you're like, bitch, seriously, come on, really? Like, This was never going to happen. All right, pretty, now get your friend. So this girl behind the counter is that kind of hot, right? Hot past what I think I should be able to get, right? So now I'm hoping that she's going to be a bitch with me when she comes to help me. Because that way, if she's a bitch, I could be like, well, fuck you, I didn't want you anyway. You know what I mean? And you walk out, and you don't look like a loser because your friend's like, what happened to that hot chick? Man, fuck that bitch. She thought she was a shit. And then, like, yeah, man, fuck her, high five, and you leave. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> so 
So I'm expecting her to be a bitch with me now, right? But instead, she turns around, sees me, and she smiles. Now I'm all fucked up. Because <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this emotion, right? So she smiles, and now here's the thing, ladies. When you smile at a guy, deep down inside, we know that you're just being nice, right? But our man brain doesn't really comprehend it that way. <laughs> My man brain kicks in and goes, Hey, Russell, she smiled. I think you've got a shot. <laughs> Turn on the cool. That's the thing. You can always tell when a guy turns on his cool. Because if a guy was cool, he wouldn't have to turn it on. Right? He was already cool. But when you turn on the cool, that's when you end up looking like a big cock. Because you, you, so you go from a regular guy. So I'm standing there and she's smiling. I'm like, What's up? <laughs> What's up? How's it going? What's up? <laughs> no, take your time. No worries. No worries. Up, up. I associate cool with really fucking stupid too, right? So, so she smiles and she comes over to help me. Now this is where the fucked up part happens, all right? Now don't judge me on any of this shit. I could feel the tension in the room right now. I could see your anticipation. None of this is my fault. All right? This is what happens. This extremely beautiful girl walks over to help me. Can I help you? <laughs> I thought I was on punk or something, right? Like, like Ashton Kutcher was going to go, ha ha, I got you with a hot deaf girl. She was deaf, right? And don't get all upset. It's not like she became deaf when I got there, you know what I mean? It's not like she went, Can I help you? Oh my God, what happened? <laughs> She's been deaf her whole life. She knew she was deaf. She's very comfortable with it. She's laughing at me now. She's fucking with me. So she's standing there. She's like, what seems to be the problem? And I'm like, well, the problem. The problem. So she's standing there deaf, and I'm standing there retarded. Oh. All right. And here's the thing, too, you know, when I first saw her, I was really attracted to her and I really wanted to have sex with her. <laughs> Guys know right away when we look at a woman whether or not we want to have sex with her. We don't care what her personality is. <laughs> She's hot, I'd like to bang her. She's an idiot. Perfect. <laughs> so, when I first saw this girl, I really wanted to have sex with her, right? And then, after I found out she was deaf, I don't know what happened, you know? I really wanted to have sex with her. <laughs> Because I started thinking really fucked up shit. <laughs> so you guys don't know how fortunate you are. You're normal human beings. You have something that comedians don't have. You have a filter in your head. No, when, when fucked up shit happens around, you have the ability to go, that's fucked up, I'll think about it later. <laughs> when fucked up shit happens to a comedian, I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> but I started thinking about shit that I should never have been thinking about, right? Because well, I, I started thinking about it. If I'm making love to this girl, I could... <laughs> I could probably get away with shit. <laughs> and I wouldn't normally be able to get away with it, you know? I'd be behind her, I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> I could phone my friends. <laughs> you know what I'm doing right now? I'm fucking. No, I'm fucking right now. Listen, listen, listen. She may catch on, she'd be like, what? And I'm like, no, no, it's so pretty, I love you. <laughs> then I started thinking about what a rough relationship it would be, you know, we couldn't talk on the phone at night, text messaging all the time, <laughs> could only see foreign films. <laughs> and just when I thought that those thoughts were bad enough, you know what a comedian's brain does? It'll give him fucked up thoughts, and then it'll one-up itself. <laughs> it'll be like, you thought that was fucked up? Check this one out. You know what I mean? And that's when I started thinking really, really stupid shit. You know when you're making love to a woman? This is the part where you shouldn't have brought your kids. Um, <clears throat> you, know <clears throat> you know when you're making love to a woman? Women all have this one generic moan. <laughs> you do. You all have the same sound. 
<laughs> okay, it's so funny when I mention sex around Indian people, they always get, ooh. <laughs> we don't talk about sex. <laughs> Indians are the most hypocritical people on the planet, you know that? We don't ever want to talk about sex, but we're the second largest population in the world. <laughs> Somebody's fucking! <laughs> So you're making love to a woman, they all have this one sound, they all make the same sound. You may have your own little take on it, your own little remix, but it's based on the same sound, you know what I mean? It's not like if you're fucking puffy, you hear, bad boy. You know, like that, you're like, 2,000 bitches. Not like that, you know what I mean? But, but women all have the same sound, you know, it's always that, oh, oh God, oh. It sounds like you stubbed your toe, you know what I mean? Oh. Oh God. It's not real. It's like one woman made that noise and you all went, eh, that sounds good, we'll do that. You've all been preconditioned to make that noise. And then I started thinking, if I was making love to this deaf girl, she's never heard that noise before. I would hear what a real woman's supposed to sound like. I would hear the true, raw emotion of a woman. And then I started thinking, what if it's a really fucked up sound? <laughs> and what if, because she's deaf, she can't control the volume of it? <laughs> and you're banging away, and all of a sudden you just hear, I'm going to call you back in a minute, man. I think I broke the deaf girl. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, Mom, how do you feel about bringing your daughter now? We are doctors, it's okay. Oh, good, good. Nice. Mom's down. Uh, you guys moved straight from India to the US? You grew up in Michigan. That's what I thought when I looked at you. <laughs> That's it. Where in Michigan? Livonia? Close to Livonia? Northville? Did you live in Livonia? Somehow this has just turned into our conversation now. <laughs> the rest of the room just went, shut the fuck up with Michigan already. Jesus Christ. That was just Michigan? Go blue! Go blue! Rose Bowl! Go what? Michigan. <laughs> and no matter what you did, you just sounded Indian as shit too. <laughs> Michigan. You ever notice that? No matter what your accent is, you could have the most fucking hardcore New York accent, and if you have to say an Indian word, it, there's only one way of doing it. Like some Indian words can only be pronounced the most Indian sounding way. You're like, what's up, dog? Yo, check it out, son. I gotta go to this Marathi party later on. <laughs> It's like we all suffer from the same disease, you know, Indian Tourette's. <laughs> you familiar with Tourette's? It's that disease where you involuntarily say shit sometimes. You'll see people walking down the street with Tourette's, it'll freak you out too, you know. They're usually by themselves because they've told all their friends to fuck off at some point. <laughs> just be walking down, fuck! <laughs> shit! I just keep walking, you know what I mean? I have Indian Tourette's, I know we all have it. I was born and raised in Canada, therefore I have a Canadian accent. However, Every now and then, an Indian accent will just pop up. I can't control that. I don't know when it's going to happen or how or why, but it happens. And it's embarrassing, too, you know what I mean? It happened at the worst time. I'm in the middle of a club trying to talk to a girl. I'm like, hey, how you doing? I just noticed you across the bar there. I was uh, wondering if maybe you'd like to go check out a party. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Would you like me to come my buddies? I'll be right back. I like accents, man. I went to England. I think the English accent's the funniest accent in the world, man. That's the only accent in the world you can't do without making a ridiculous face. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, good evening. I'm from England. <laughs> ah, I am. Ah, ah. <laughs> it's so fucking real. Ah, ah. Where are you from? England. Ah. 
You want to piss people from England off? Because they're very arrogant? Tell them you've never heard of it. <laughs> Holy shit, they go mental. Hey, where are you from, man? That's an interesting accent. I'm from England. <laughs> I'm sorry, where? England, ah. Yeah, I've never heard of it, man. England? I believe you're speaking our language. I'm speaking English. I don't know what the fuck you're speaking. Man. England, ah. I think that's why English guys don't get laid a lot, you know what I mean? Women don't want that hanging over them. Ooh, oh, God. Oh, right. Oh, this is what a delightful feeling. Oh, oh, oh. Smashing. Smashing. Oh. Oh God! Oh, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. You're from England, dude. What part of England are you from? London. You don't sound like you're from London. Do you still have your accent? No. What part of London are you from? Preston. Brixton. That's South London. Yeah. Brixton's a black area. You a really white dude. Like white, white. Look like you died a month ago. You know what I mean? Like that kind of. <laughs> what the fuck are you, the Muppet judges? Jesus Christ! <laughs> Boo! He said he died. <laughs> hey, say good to again. Boo! <laughs> You're the fucking awkwardest booers ever. <laughs> so awkward it made me say awkwardest. <laughs> How long ago did you move to the U.S.? How old are you now? Seventeen. So you moved here when you were five. <laughs> Great. You must have a deep connection there. <laughs> Do you know that England has the largest amount of Indian people outside of India? Did you know that? It's true. And the English are mad that we're there. It's true. You walk around England. As a brown man, I can feel the tension, you know. Walking around, I hear them under their breath. Go home, you brown bastards. <laughs> It's not our fault that we're in England. That's the British people's fault. They started that shit. They went to India first. 1600s. We didn't ask them to come over. They just showed up. They stayed for 400 years. 1947, they just got up and left. We were like, no, 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 wait. We're coming with you. <laughs> you can't just come here and leave. What the hell are you going to eat? <laughs> oh, the English. I love Indian women. I think Indian women are beautiful. Mental, but you're beautiful. You, know, you are a little crazy. You don't act like you're not a little crazy. You, know, you got a little. Sometimes you think, a you know. I think Indian girls nowadays, though, compared to the Indian girls that were around when I was growing up, are real different. You know what I mean? Because let's be honest, you know what I mean? As a race of people, Indian people are very hairy people. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's nothing we can do about it. I think the god that was making Indian people was like showing off to like the other gods, like with some sort of practical joke. You know what I mean? Like, hey guys, come here to watch this, watch this, come here. Come here, put it down, Buddha, come here. <clears throat> I'm going to take these people here and I'll put them in the hottest place in the world. And just for fun, I'll cover them with hair. It's hot as shit and we're hairy. What kind of a shit deal is that? And the hair's not limited to just the men. <laughs> Don't get upset, lady. Let's see you pulling down your sleeves. Fuck him. girls nowadays are taking care of it properly, you know what I mean? They, yeah, sure, they have some body hair and stuff, but they take care of it. They all go waxing, they wax their lip and shit, and, and they look proper now, you know what I mean? Back in the day, Indian girls were being cute. They wouldn't wax nothing. They fucking bleach their mustache. I didn't have a problem with the color of your mustache, sweetheart. It's not like a blonde goatee is much sexier, you know? I 
I love Indian women, but I don't like Indian women that watch too many Bollywood movies, man. That shit is... Uh, those chicks are drama queens, man. I do not, I'll be honest with you, I do not like Indian movies. I can stand in front of you right now and tell you that. And some people go, Russell, you don't like Indian movies? You don't like your heritage. You don't like your culture. My culture is older than 50 fucking years, you know that, right? Like, Indian movie doesn't make me fucking Indian, you know what I mean? And I'll tell you why I don't like Indian movies. I have a reason. I like movies that are based on reality, that seem like they can happen, you know what I mean? When I walk out of the theater, I want to be able to look at my friend and go, shit, that's crazy, that could probably happen. Who ever walked out of an Indian movie going, that's possible? <laughs> at which point tonight do you think you're all going to get up, start singing the same song and dancing at the same fucking time? <laughs> it's not going to happen. And I don't like bad acting. Indian movies are full of bad acting. They overact in every scene, no matter, even if they send a room, hello! That's not real life. Somebody entered your house and hello! He went, get the fuck out of my house. Bad overacting. White dudes, have you seen an Indian movie before? Have you? I'm sorry about that, man. Jackson, if you've never seen an Indian movie in your life, I'm here to save you 12 hours. Because the movies are sinfully long, right? <laughs> Clearly there's no fucking editing process in an Indian movie. Sometimes you might even see the boom mic just drop into the scene, you know what I mean? <laughs> They're long, like stupid long. I remember flying to India in 1998. I made the mistake of flying with Air India. You know it's a shit airline when Indian people go, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> even we don't do that. We will take a boat quicker than you take it. <laughs> Air India is a horrible airline. I remember I flew from Toronto to, to India, to Bombay, and it was like a 25-hour flight. We arrive in Bombay after 25 hours, and we're circling the airport now for another three hours. It's like 28 hours now on the plane. I grab a flight, and I'm like, what the fuck is the problem? Why aren't we landing? He goes, oh, sir, the movie has not finished yet. <laughs> Just two more hours. He started it before we left. This is the long version. Stupid long, man. Jackson, if you've never seen an Indian movie, I'm going to break it down for you right now, man. This is the story that any, every Indian movie ever made. All right? This is the, this is the storyline. Boy meets girl. Girl meets boy. They fall in love, they can't be together. The boy was a dishwasher. God forbid we're pretentious. So the girl's parents forbid her from ever seeing the boy. So the girl, very upset, runs away from home. Usually through an open field. Not just an open field though, the most beautiful open field you've ever seen in your life. It's got sprawling green grass for miles. Nothing in sight, clear blue sky, bright sunshine, just a wide open field, and she's running through that field in slow motion crying. <laughs> and her boobs are bouncing in slow motion. <laughs> doom, doom. <laughs> doom, doom. <laughs> doom, doom. <laughs> and she's running and crying, and the sky's blue, and the sun is shining, and all of a sudden, it starts to rain. There's no clouds in the sky. <laughs> It's just raining. And it doesn't start to drizzle. It starts to piss down like it's never rained before. And she doesn't react like a normal person. What do you do when it rains? Oh, fuck, it's raining. <laughs> what does she do? Ah! Ah! She starts singing and dancing in the rain. And all of a sudden, in the middle of singing and dancing and wide open field and clear blue sky and no clouds, the boy she's in love with appears out of nowhere. And at some point when he got there, he planted a tree. Because there was no tree there before. And, he's, and their eyes meet across the field and he's standing in that really fucking cool Indian actor pose. <laughs> and their eyes meet and her face lights up. And they run towards each other in slow motion. And his boobs start bouncing. <laughs> and his 80s hairstyle. <laughs> and they're running towards each other. 
and they're running, and they're running, and they run past each other. <laughs> because instead of hugging the man she loves, she thinks it'll be more fun to have a game of fucking hide-and-go-seek around this tree right now. <laughs> she runs straight for the tree and starts... like a normal guy and going, you know what, when you're done, I'm going to be right here. He thinks it'd be really cool too. He's like, and then after about half an hour of playing fucking chase around this tree, he catches her and they embrace and she gives him that really goofy giggle and he holds her close in his arms and he looks deep into her eyes. This is where one of two scenarios can happen. One is, he's holding her close, he's looking her deep in the eyes, he could get shot from behind. Because nothing says I love you like a bullet in the ass. But it's okay if he gets shot, he's not gonna die right away. We're Indians, you can't kill us that easy. He's still got another six hours left in this movie. He's gonna die and overact his way across India. <laughs> and the whole way, uh, uh, busted! Uh, uh, be, be. <laughs> That's one scenario. The more likely scenario, they're in each other's arms. He holds her close. He looks deep into her eyes. And he says the magic words. Oh, baby. <laughs> I love you. And he leans in. And she leans in. And they get closer. And closer. And then... She starts singing and runs away again. I grab her by her. Bitch, get back here. We're not done yet. I planted a fucking tree for you. You guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Good night. One more time for my man, Russell Peters!